Welcome to the very first episode of GTS, shorthand for Google Batch Stuff. My name is Sound, and today we're going to make an automatic opening door in Unreal Engine 4. This door will open and close based on the player proximity and have sound effects to go along. So if this sounds like your door and you've got 10 minutes to spare, stick around. And, um, I was making this for an elevator door. You guys can use it however else you would like to, but essentially, um, go in and it opens when you're near it, and it closes when you're not. It's pretty simple and straightforward. We're going to also add sound effects for that. So, um, stare into our eyes and let's get started. What we want to first do is create a empty blueprint class with an actor, empty actor. So the next step is that we want to go to our door asset, whatever your door asset is, and put that over into our scene. Um, make sure that when you're dragging your assets in here, guys, because of the door, typically you want your root position to be at the bottom there. Um, I had this janky door where its root position was like, like a thousand miles off in the distance there, so I uh, get a rigged a solution by creating a blueprint to reset its root position. Um, just kind of a thing when you're getting random assets uh, off the Epic Store. I, no shade or anything, but anyway. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I got this door here, and then the next thing we want to do is create a collision box. That's going to be the thing that is tracking whether the player is inside the trigger or outside of the trigger. So I'm going to go to add components and type in uh, box collision. <clears throat> so I'm going to call it door trigger. And as you can see, um, it parented itself to my door. So if I move my door, my collision box moves with it, which is not what we want, because we want our collision to just stay in the doorway, regardless of whether the door is there or not. Um, so simply just drag it up. Uh, drag it up here and uh, make sure that it's not attached. So if we do move our door, uh, we are not moving our collision. If you've got some jankiness going on, uh, check to see if that is your issue. So I got my collision box. I'm going to resize it to the door frame. Five minutes later, I have sized this collision box the way it should be. Um, also, we're going to have noise effects for when the door opens and closes. Um, I will provide a link for the things that I'm using. First, let's add an audio component. Um, let's call it open door and right now it is connected to my collision box I just want it not attached to anything yeah the cool thing about audio cues is they are always set to just fire automatically um, and just like every other checkbox that ruins lives it's a thing you got to be aware of um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off now that I'm thinking about these things. Okay, so I got my open door. I'm going to hit Control W to just duplicate that audio cue and then call this one Close Door. I'm going to go ahead and add the sound effects for these things. All right, so I've got my open door and my closed door, and both of them are not set to fire immediately when I play the game. Time to actually make stuff. Okay, so we have our door. We have the collision box that's going to be checking the player near the door. We have our sound cues for those things. So we are ready to blueprint. I guess what I'm going to do first is we're going to set up our door's movement. I'm going to go ahead and drag this door here onto my blueprint. Drag out um, and type in set relative location. It's relative because we are in a blueprint. We don't need to worry about the world position of this door. Um, so as you can see, my door is zeroed out. And when we move it, I'm only moving the y-axis. Um, so that's cool. So we're only going to move the y-axis. 
cool. And because we're only moving one thing, we're not going to have a vector go through that. We're just going to split the construct so that we can expose just the Y parameter. Um, and what we want to do is create a timeline. So I'm going to right click, add timeline. I'm going to call that move door. Always name your stuff. Um, and I'm going to double click into it. And because we're only um, messing with one parameter here with the Y, we're not going to use a vector. We're just going to go ahead and create a float track. I'm going to call it I want move door. Yeah. So uh, in my testing, um, the length of the door opening, a good feeling door is around, I believe I put 8.8 .8 seconds. We've got our timeline. We got 0.8 seconds long. I want to add a key to the beginning. I'm going to go ahead and zero out the time and key at the end and put it at the final time. Cool. Now what we're going to do is go back to our viewport and grab our door. And right now our location is zero. Um, let's go ahead and drag it to see what's a good like opening for the door. Uh, 160 looks pretty okay. So when our door is open, it is going, the Y is going to be 160. So if I go here to my final curve here and make it the value of 160. <clears throat> Go ahead and save. Alright, so I'm at my event graph. I have my relative location. I have this value is now represented in an out channel on my timeline. Chug that right into my Y location because I want my door to be moving sideways. Um, if you wanted your door to be going up and down, you just plug whatever value for your Z up. So I have gotten my move door float uh, connected to the position of the door that I want to change. We can test that right now in the scene. Um, it's going to fire immediately. I've hooked it up this way. Compile, go here, and it should just move. Ta-da! We got a moving door. Um, now we, what we want to do is set up our door to only do the movement once the player has entered the collision states. On to this scene here in our event graph. Going to drag out. Uh, context sensitive might mess with you, so I'm just going to toggle that off. Um, I'll look up event begin overlap. And then I want to do the same for event for the end overlap. So I just type in end overlap. So I got event actor begin overlap and and the end actor overlap. So we can uh, quickly go on to hook these up and have it play forward when they enter the collision zone and then reverse the timeline of the door when they come out of the door. So we can go ahead and check that already. Um, and when I get close to it, it'll open. Cool. And it closes when I go in. So if you don't care about noise, which most people don't, you're done. <laughs> so I've dragged out to create some space because we're going to add the audio cues. I'm going to put open door onto the scene and drag out here and type in play. Get that going. I'm going to comment this to be the open door. I'm going to do the same for my closed door. Okay, so I got my open and closed door. So if you press the S button and click, it's going to give you a sequence node. So we're going to do the same for each one. S click to get a sequence node. I'm going to have my overlap begin, fire my timeline for playing forward. And then my audio cue for opening the door. And the same goes for the end overlap. I want you to play the reverse timeline and then play the door closing sound. And let's get that a go. Let's see what happens. Whoop-de-doo. 
See, that was like 30 seconds more, and that door is a thousand times better with noise. So that is the very first episode of GTS Google That Stuff. I am sound. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I really just wanted to make a short and sweet video that has one solution. Um, hopefully if you're a new developer, you found me and it helped you save time on Googling things. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section. Give it a like, maybe subscribe. I really want to keep going with these things. So that about does it for now. I guess I'll see you guys in the next little nugget video I do. Bye.